Hello and welcome to Arirang News. Starting today, we will be bringing you live news updates every two hours on weekdays from 6 a.m. to midnight Korea time. So don't forget to tune in for your daily dose of news from in and outside of Korea. We begin at the nation's top office. President Park Geun-hye held a summit with Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte in Seoul earlier today. Marking 55 years of diplomatic ties, the two leaders agreed to step up practical economic cooperation in fields ranging from trade and investment to future growth engines like bio industries and big data. They also signed five MOUs after the talks. The two leaders also discussed ways to reinforce cooperation on countering North Korea. It appears Hillary Clinton is the winner of America's highly anticipated first presidential debate. A CNN poll of people who watched the intensive 90-minute debate showed the Democratic candidate beating her Republican rival Donald Trump 62 to 27 percent. Other major media outlets, including the New York Times and the Washington Post, have also named Clinton as the clear winner. Analysts generally gave her points for maintaining her composure and defending herself against Trump's personal jabs, interruptions and false statements. Trump lost points for a lack of substantive uh, responses and being on the defensive most of the time. We'll have full coverage of the historic debate in our evening newscast. The United States has blacklisted and filed criminal charges against a Chinese firm and four Chinese individuals for illegal trade with North Korea. This marks the first time Washington has imposed direct sanctions on a Chinese firm in connection with North Korea's weapons programs. The U.S. Treasury says it has frozen all assets of Dandong Hongxiang Industrial in the U.S. and seized the firm's 25 bank accounts as well as 21 alleged shell companies. The move follows the recent revelation that the firm exported several materials that can help Pyongyang develop weapons of mass destruction. Korea's unionized subway and railway workers are staging a strike, the first of its kind in 22 years, to protest against government-led adoption of a performance-based pay system. Nearly 10,000 people are estimated to be taking part, but with temporary workers filling in, most subway and railway trains are operating as usual. Unionized subway workers in Seoul and the southern port city of Busan, as well as railway workers across the country, are taking part in the strike. The government has called for an immediate end to the strike and said the protesters will be dealt with strictly and according to the law. Another milestone for Arirang TV. We have begun broadcasting on local satellite networks in the UK for the very first time. Our Kwon Jung Ho is in London to witness Arirang's first airing on British soil. Arirang TV is transmitted to over 100 countries around the world, but now it's taken a new step in the UK by being made available on Britain's local satellite networks. On September 26th, Arirang TV became available in UK households, including Emma Stock's home here in London. Emma, a fashion student, has been an avid fan of Korean culture for a number of years now. She had been watching Arirang online in the past, but now she's excited about the prospect of having it readily available in her living room in full HD. I think it's really cool because I can see like favourite actors, singers, um, there's a variety of different shows to watch. And um, I can show my mum and my family what I'm up to and then why I like Korea so much, and then they can learn more as well. Arirang is now on two TV service providers in the UK, Sky and Freesat. Together, they are beamed into more than six million households. The UK is the fourth largest English-speaking nation in the world and is therefore an especially important market for Arirang, whose English language broadcasts look to share and better inform people about Korea's culture, history and current affairs. I think the excitement's beginning to build now. People are starting to hear about it, and I think it will be very, very popular on FreeSat. We hope it will bring a new perspective on news and culture and more information and introduce UK viewers to Korea. Anticipation is high among those who have already an interest in Korea. This is New Malden. Located in the suburbs of London, it's home to some 20,000 Koreans, the largest Korean community in Europe. 
It also attracts those who have an interest and a connection with Korea and its culture. Among the local Korean restaurants, shops and businesses, I found Sebastian, a linguist who worked as a translator in Seoul and used to watch Arirang TV before moving back to the UK. Um, I thought it was a really good way to get into Korean culture. Um, also, it was a lot easier because it was in English. Uh, I think it's really great that now I can just, it's coming, up, it's coming at home, so now I can just go home, turn on the TV, and I can have Arirang right there. Like that. And I think it's going to be really good to tell my other friends about it. Sebastian's friend Cheong is also keen to see what Arirang has to offer. Um, as a British-born Korean, I feel I felt um, kind of um, a big distance away from everything that was happening in Korea. And when I did try to tune into the news, obviously um, the level of Korean being spoken on television is is way too high standard for me to understand. So I think so to have it accessible in English at home would be really convenient. But as well as bridging the gap for those who already have connections with Korea. There are high hopes that, through informative and entertaining content, Arirang TV will be able to reach a new British audience. Kwon Jang-ho, Arirang News, London. Thank you for watching. Business Daily is next.